For over 20 years, I've dedicated my life to bringing you the very best selling, marketing, and business building strategies to keep your business thriving. Get ready to experience the success you've been searching for. Welcome to the Tom Ferry Show. Hey everybody, welcome to the Tom Ferry Show, episode 50. Marnie, Taz, Sarah, we did it. Congratulations. 50. So continuing on from last week's conversation, I just want to jump right in and say to you, you know, we talked about your goals are set and are you in massive action? It was interesting doing some research with my team, looking at the number of people that actually set a New Year's resolution. Um, I did some research, right? So I wanna talk about like why most people fail early and what you should do about it. What is shocking is 40% of the people set a goal, a, a New Year's resolution. And by the way, it's usually not a goal. It's usually in the form of like, uh, I'm gonna stop this or I'm gonna start that. I'm gonna start exercising. I'm gonna lose weight. Did any sound remotely familiar? 40% of the people, so now I want you to think about this. So there's uh, seven and a half billion people on the planet and only 40% set a goal. In, in the US, what we have 350-ish, 330 million people, 40% will say, I need to lose weight, I need to be better to my spouse, I wanna make more money. There's some sort of resolution, 40%. Just in contrast, a third of all Americans will watch the Super Bowl, but only 40% will try and make their life better. Is that shocking to you? Um, if you read my book, Life by Design, I wrote in there that I just believe in my heart of hearts. Not you, not you, but so many people on this planet are in a walking, talking coma. Their entire life is just boop, boop, boop. Not a lot going on. You with me on this? But you and I, we are the exceptional few. We have a desire to do better, to serve more, and to be the best us that we can be. So let me share a little insight. 40% of the people set a resolution. Would it shock you to hear that the number of people that actually follow through is the University of Scranton did some research on this, check it out. Only 8%, 8%, of all people actually follow through. Now, of course, the question is, why? Why will most people set some kind of resolution or intention? I'm gonna start running that hill. I'm gonna lose some weight. I'm gonna be better to my spouse. I'm gonna save more money. I'm gonna finally get out of debt, wah, wah, wah but only 8% follow through. Now, as a business coach, as a student of personal and professional development for nearly, my goodness, it's going on 30 years in, in two years, oh my goodness, I can tell you that it's pretty obvious. I call it excusitis. Excusitis, <coughs> I, have, I have a cold, no, <coughs> I have excuses. Do you know people that are just walking, talking, excuse-making machines? Do you know people like that? Like it, it's like I think about a friend of mine who, has dated um, four or five people that are exactly the same. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like the same look, the same attitude, the same mindset. And every time he says, you know, women are this and, you know, relationships don't work. And I'm like, dude, you're the common denominator. You keep dating the same person over and over again. He doesn't address the issue. He's making excuses. I talked to agents that didn't achieve their goal last year. And I say, so what was the cause? And they say, well, you know, the market slowed down. People got concerned, you know, interest rates this. Um, you know, the market softened in my area. I had a bad transaction that really impacted me. But do you notice that all the things that they're saying are usually out here, right? They're out here. They never go back here and say, the market got soft, so I sped up my lead generation. I improved upon my conversion. I gave more service. I put in more time. No, it's pretty obvious. Hey, I'm gonna lose weight, but only 8% of the people follow through. Why? It's the same excuses, right? And because it's kind of the cold season, people got a cold called excuse-itis. Let's look at some of the most obvious ones. And my hope, my hope is that when you look at this list, you go, nope, 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 ooh, coach, that's the one for me. And you make a decision today to move forward. So let's take a look at some of the excuses. I can start tomorrow. This is my favorite one. You know, um, I can always start tomorrow because you know today, uh, you know I don't feel as well. I've got a cold. I've got this. I've got that. Or I'm really busy, so I can start tomorrow. Well, here's the deal, right? What we know is you got to start immediately. That's what we talked about in the last Tom Ferry show. You got to start right now and be in massive action, especially on the days you don't feel like it. But look at the second one. Today, I've got to work on. Do you know that one? 
right? I've got to work on my deal. I've got to work on this escrow. I've got to work on this listing. I've got to work on this client. I've got this, this, this customer coming into town and I've got to get all my showings ready. I've got to preview all these houses. <laughs> you know, the, the, the rat, what do they call that? The rat race? No, I'm kind of thinking like the treadmill or something. whatever. You know what I'm talking about. Here's the deal. This, this is why this happens. See, you were smart enough to say, I've got a plan, I've got a goal, this is what I'm committed to. I wanna have this many transactions, make this much money, save this much money. I'm asking you to acknowledge, if any of these excuses are relevant for you, awareness is the first step of change. Awareness, hello, my name is Tom, and I'm suffering from excuse-itis. This is my excuse, I'm now aware of it, I'm gonna do something about it, and I've got some solutions. Look at number three, this is a big one. My morning routine isn't supporting me. Think about it like this. You've heard me do this, right? You're seeing me say, here is your commitment, and what we need to do is align our behaviors. Here's my commitment, we need to align our behaviors. My son, Stephen, who I've talked about, maybe you met him at the summit, um, he's a tennis player. So, you know, he and I were in this conversation a couple days ago about his number one goal. I wanna be the number one seed on my team, and da 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 da, and he's all fired up about it. And I said, so you've got this commitment, and then he and I were in this very sort of father-son transparent, can you imagine being my kid, right, dialogue about his morning routine wasn't in alignment. See, his coach has said, I need you to do A, B, C, one, two, three before you go to school. I need you to do A, B, C when you get out of school before you come to the club to practice. And if those behaviors aren't aligned, what's the likelihood of him achieving his goal? See, the reality is, my friends, you and I both know whether it's my son playing tennis or you saying, I know that if I do my prospecting calls, I know if I do my role play, if I do my marketing, if I do my follow-up and I do it first thing in the morning, my day's gonna take off and it's just gonna be unbelievable. But if your morning routine doesn't support that, you know, if your morning routine is constant negative news, you know, CNN or Fox or MSNBC, I don't care which one you're talking about, they're all basically death, dying, and negativity. So if you're watching that, and you're not listening to something positive, if you're not reviewing your goals, if you're not getting a little exercise, getting your heart rate up, then you're not preparing yourself emotionally, emotionally to go out, do the work, align your behaviors and achieve your goals. So this is a big one. Look at number four. Again, excuse-itis. My goals aren't up in visual. Now, you might say, well, how is that an excuse? You know, Tom, I know my goals. See, think about it like this. If the goals aren't up in visual, if there's no scoreboard, if there's no tracking and measuring, if there's no like, this is who I am and this is what I'm committed to, and I know if you took that screen down, it's over there, and you walk outside the office, it's over there, and we have all of our goals are up in visual. Why? Because everybody needs to know what we're committed to. Now you might say, but Tom, I, you know, I'm not in a team. I'm not in a situation like you. I'm, I'm inside my office, or I've got a cubicle, or I've got my private office at, at you know, my brokerage. I would say to you, the same rules apply. Why would you not have I am committed to helping 36 families buy and sell real estate in the calendar year 2016, one to 36 in a countdown, and you put a happy face or a closing or whatever you want to acknowledge every transaction. Now, I know why you don't do it. Most people won't because then people are gonna walk by and say, Sarah, whoa, 36, so you know, not prospecting, not doing open houses, never showing up at the office, that's, that's really getting you there, right? No way, you're not gonna let, in it. by the way, no one says that. They just look at you and look at the goal and give you that look like, <laughs> You know the look, right? It's the, it's the look of like, oh yeah, sure. You, would you get all motivated and set a goal, but then you don't follow through? That's why we don't do it. So get it up, get it visual. It's a part of the accountability process. It's a part of putting your ass on the line and saying, this is what I'm, I have no ass by the way. This is what I'm committed to. Welcome to the Tom Ferry Show, love it. If you're watching for the first time, <laughs> let's just keep going. Number five, this is arguably, in my opinion, the biggest one. My support team doesn't know my goals and doesn't know my new behaviors. So think about it like this. You've got a support team. Now you might say, no, Tom, I don't have a support well, Listen, you got a spouse, you got a friend, you got a broker, you got a manager, you got me, you got a, your friends, you got a Facebook community. The reality is we all have some level of support. It could be your escrow officer, it could be your title manager, it could be the person, you know, your, your loan officer. They want you to do better. That's your support group. If your support group doesn't understand the goal, what you're committed to and why and the behaviors or the activities that you need to do to make that happen, then they can't encourage, they can't remind, they can't gently nudge and push you. It's real simple, guys. It's real simple. 
if everybody knows what you're committed to, yeah, your booty's on the line, and yes, the odds of you following through are so much greater than having your goals be a secret. So I don't know if any of those first few excuses add up. This one I know is really big. And by the way, when you're sharing your, your goals, you don't go, oh, Marnie, oh, look at me, I'm gonna go do this. No, you say, Marnie, this is what I'm committed to and I would love to you know, have any support I can get from you. And by the way, Marnie, what are your goals? Right? I have right now on Evernote about 62 people where I've said, what are your top three goals? And then they email me back. And these are, you know, Ken Pozak just did it recently, so big shout out to Ken. Uh, Jeff Campbell from Geographic Farm. I just ask them, what are your top three goals? And they publish them. And, you know, what's cool is when you ask people, what are your top three goals? Like right now, they all say, oh, this, this, this. And then because the people I hang out with, my support group, they all ask, well, Tom, what are your top three goals? And I share those top three goals. And then I put them inside Evernote. And my thinking is that every time I'm talking to those people, and I know people all over the world, to be able to say to Bernard in Israel, hey, your top three goals, where are you at? What's going on? How's it working out? See, I want to be a support for them, and they'll be a support for me. And together, you and I, we will do more. Does that make sense? No excuses. Look at number six. I took on too much. <laughs> That's always fun. I've never prospected before and I'm going for three hours a day. Well, that's like saying you've never run before and you're committed to run a marathon on Tuesday. Now, you know, there are some courses you can take that allow you to run a marathon in about three months, but it, it's a slow growth, like let's walk, let's get running shoes, <laughs> let's walk, let's start to run, let's start doing a mile, then five miles and 10 miles, and then you eventually do that last 20 mile run and then you run the marathon. It takes time. See. If you take on too much, you get overwhelmed. And when you're overwhelmed, you're in your head. And when you're in your head, you and I both know that's a scary place to be, right? There's no action when you're in your head. Should I be doing this? What if I do that? Remember, this is like old school. We're all six moves from death and dying up here. Did you know this? It's just human psychology. I say to Taz, Taz, you should start calling expired listings. And he's like, if I call expired listings, they're probably gonna reject me. If they reject me, I'm not gonna feel good. If I don't feel good, then I'm not gonna perform well. If I don't perform well, I'm probably not gonna make any money. If I don't make any money, I'm not gonna be able to eat. If I don't eat, I'm gonna die. And all I said was, hey Taz, you should call expired listings. Our head is just a strange place to be. We can't be in our head. We gotta be in action, no excuses. The last one is, I haven't gamified it. <laughs> you like the way I spell that? Game, iffy, <laughs> I'd, something like that. But you know what I mean. See, if, if I say to Marnie, all right, so Marnie, we both wanna lose five pounds, so let's, let's make a, a deal, right? We're both gonna, we're gonna bring a scale in the office, we're gonna weigh ourselves, and then what we're gonna do is we're both gonna put in 50 bucks, and whoever loses the weight the fastest collects the money. We've now turned it into a competition. We've turned it into a game. Does that make sense? If you gamify the most important behaviors, if you gamify the new disciplines you wanna take on, hey, here's the game. Let's see, I wanna get up at five o'clock in the morning, so I'm gonna call you at 5.01, but the deal is, I can't just call you and lay back down, I've gotta call you, take a photo of myself in my gym clothes, so you know I'm doing it, you with me? And whoever gets up the earliest wins. You gamify, you make it fun, and this way, it's not like, oh, I'm changing and I'm doing all these new disciplines. Instead, it's like, I'm competitive, I'm having a good time with this, I'm having fun, right? It gets our heart racing a little bit, and, and while we're doing this, we're slowly aligning our behaviors. Does that make sense? So let's look at the list. Again, I can always start it tomorrow. I have to work on. My morning routine isn't supporting me. My goals aren't up in visual. My support team doesn't know what I'm committed to, so they don't know if I'm on track or off track. Um, I took on too much, got overwhelmed, and I haven't gamified it. Now, I don't know if any of those excuses relate to you. I hope they don't, but if you got one, remember, awareness is the first step of change. The moment I can say, hello, my name is Tom, and I took on too much, I need to simplify now. Now I can be in the right action. So here's my solutions, you ready? The first thing I think is start small, right? Start small. Um, I love Emerson's quote, you've heard me talk about it before. Do the thing, have the power. Do not the thing, have not the power. So, so in my dialogue with all my clients, with all my friends, I have a company meeting in a few days and we're gonna get in front of everybody and we're gonna remind everybody of their top three goals and I'm gonna remind everybody what was that one, two, or three simple behaviors that you can take on that would naturally and automatically align you with the accomplishment of your goals? Let me say it to you again. 
What are one, two, or three simple behavioral changes you can make that would naturally, naturally, and automatically align you with the accomplishment of your goals? When you do the thing, you have the power. Does that make sense? So here's three that I know. I mean, hands down, probably relate to just about every person watching, at least one of them, ready? The first thing I know is change your mindset, change your life. Change your mindset, change your life. So what's your routine when it comes to personal and professional development? Um, I am a fanatic on YouTube. I love YouTube, I go there every day. Um, it is a part of my morning routine. I was on the treadmill yesterday, on the treadmill this morning, and I'm going through uh, Tony Robbins, the, um, he did a series on his money mastery thing, and they're like, perfect, because it's 45 minutes and I wanna run for 45 minutes. Perfect, good structure, good accountability. But you know what's funny? He didn't say a lot of things that I hadn't heard before. Probably like I'm not saying a lot of things that you're like, whoa, I've never heard that before. But it's the constant reinforcement. It's the, it's the old sort of metaphorical example of this is the cup, right? And here is you know, what's inside the cup. And if you keep pouring in all this good stuff, eventually all the crapola that's in here eventually runs out and there's nothing but good stuff inside there. Change your mindset, change your life. Um, my older son, we made a discipline. This is one thing that we took on. We listened to The Slight Edge in December, just the first 30 minutes of Jeff Olson's extraordinary book, the unabridged audio version of The Slight Edge. Highly recommend it. The first 33 minutes, Jeff talks about you can completely change your entire personal psychology just by reading 10 pages a day of a good book. 10 pages a day of a good book, 365 days, 3,650 pages. That's anywhere between 15 to 20 good books. So if you just went into your library of all the books you've already bought and you just read 10 pages a day. Now, here's what's great. I'm reading 10 pages a day. He's reading 10 pages a day. My other son is now taking on 10 pages a day. My wife is already an avid reader. She's reading you know, 30 or 40 pages a day. Um, but all of a sudden now, we're all in this mindset of just another accountability, supporting each other to change our mindset to change our life. Does that make sense? Easy to do, right? That's the beautiful thing about this, easy to do. Number two, when I feel good, I perform good. So I believe one of the most important new behaviors you should have is a daily routine or something that you do that causes you to feel good. Because when you feel good, you perform good. And when you feel bad, how do you perform? When I feel good, I've got confidence, I've got swagger. I'll make the tough call. I'll reach out to the prospect that maybe normally I wouldn't. I will follow my schedule and I'll be more focused when I feel good. But when I don't feel good, excusitis kicks in and I'm out. So what's the new behavior that'll cause you to feel good? It could be a mental thing, it could be a physical thing, I don't know. Is it writing your goals every day? Is it writing your gratitude every day? Is it meditation, is it prayer? Oh, right? It's all good by me, just do something that makes you feel good. And the last one is, ready? Five, five, four, or one appointment a day. Five calls to your database, five conversations with new prospects, four lead follow-up conversations, generating one appointment a day. You do that, and at the end of the day, you're gonna crush it in 2016. So let's recap, you ready? Why will most people fail and what should you do about it? 40% of the people set an intention, set a resolution. Ask 10 people today, hey, what was your resolution? And you'll hear all these people and then ask, so have you done it every day? Have you done it? We're only a couple weeks into the new year. Have you done it every day? Ask 10 people. It'd be really interesting to see how many people say, well, I missed a few. I mean, uh, yeah, oh, good reminder. And we're only three weeks into the new year. Think about it, only 8% follow through. We know why. <coughs> excusitis, and we know the solutions. So I'm gonna ask you, for the first time ever, the question of the day at the Tom Ferry Show. I wanna know two things. What was your resolution, and what was the most important behavioral change? Put it on my YouTube channel, or put it on my Facebook page, or send me a tweet. What was your resolution for this year? You know, your goal, your intention, and what was the most important behavioral change you need to make in order to absolutely dominate 2016? Thank you so much for watching. Remember always your strategy matters and now more than ever, your passion rules. Thanks for watching. If you love what you're seeing here, then click the button below to join our online community absolutely free. Thanks so much. <laughs>